Today I'm uh, I chose you eight to travel throughout time. Goodness, I'm getting a commercial on my own stream. Uh, today I'm starting uh, to color a cartoon that I did yesterday, and I'm going to do this in Photoshop like I usually do, and I'll take an opportunity to uh, discuss some of the issues that uh, that come up in coloring and preparing things for print. See that the stream is still just getting started. All right. Um, here you have a view of my actual Wacom tablet here on my drawing table in front of me, which is uh, uh, something new. That's, I've only been drawing with pencil before. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is um, I'm cleaning up the image that I drew yesterday. That is this. This is the switch to here. This is the drawing from yesterday. The the bull being uh, pulled down and drowned by oil um, with the stock market crash last week. And again, this is similar to one that I drew um, earlier with uh, Obama as the anchor uh, dragging down the Democrats. So I'm going to color this one probably similarly to the one that I did before. And um, I'll talk about some of the, the issues that you have to deal with in uh, coloring for print. And um, yesterday when I drew this one, I showed you some similar cartoons that I've done before. I can bring those back up again, but I've done, you know, oil prices go up and down, and every time they go down, they bop somebody in the head, like Nicolas Maduro from Venezuela, uh, Iran. Here's another weighted down in the water cartoon. So this is kind of a standard. This is one I did earlier in the week when all the news was about, um, uh, about the crash in China affecting the stock market here. So, um, hey, that's where we are. Comment, I'll be here for a while doing my coloring. Coloring takes me, uh, usually takes me about an hour. I don't know how long it'll take on this one. We'll have to see. So what happens here is I scan my cartoon. This is, these are the scans from yesterday. This is basically what it looks like. Uh, I scan in three parts because I've got a cheap scanner from uh, Walmart and um, here you can see let's get this up here you can see what the original drawing looked like that I drew yesterday and it's I draw an 11 uh, on 14 by 17 inch um, vellum and make it kinda look like it's uh, uh, ink drawing because I use uh, hard pencil and so that's the idea I want this to look like a ink drawing that's uh, clean and pretty and crisp and um, comes out like this in when I scan it and then I crank up the contrast and what you get is this so that's where I am today I'm still uh, cleaning up the hickeys on this, and you can see the hickeys up here, it's a thumbprint and stuff, those kinds of things blacken up when I, uh, when I up the contrast. So I come back in and then I take out those kinds of things here. I'm doing it with the lasso tool. I've got white background, so that'll just disappear. And I come through this uh, fairly quickly. It's not a very demanding job to take out the hickeys. But, you know, necessary. This is the last little bit of uh, hickeys that I'm doing before I'll prep this for 
coloring. All the little bits of uh, junk and grit and fingerprint and thread that I notice here and there. You need to do this even if you're drawing in ink, although presumably your ink drawing would be cleaner. Lots of guys have ink drawings that are even dirtier than my um, pencil drawings because they'll draw lightly in pencil as a guide before they ink. Then they've got to clean up all the pencil lines and they end up with just about as much crud as I end up with my pencil drawing from the start. So I don't think there's any advantage in terms of cleanup and crud to drawing in ink. And you notice that a lot of these little things I'm taking out are little things that I actually drew. And a little bit of it improves the drawing, like I'm doing here with the seaweed on the bottom. So, um, appreciate any comments from any of you. Happy to chat. So what I'm going to do today is I will take this Photoshop image, which I've saved as 1000 DPI line art, and I'm going to color it as CMYK, which is what you want to do for print. And I will explain why. Okay. So Let's see, is that you, Scott? Did you just leave me a comment now, or am I looking at a comment from yesterday? To answer your question on the scanning, what resolution are you using, and what will the final resolution be? Grayscale, what hardware are you using for the coloration? I'm using um, my old version of Photoshop, Photoshop CS4. I haven't bought a new Photoshop for years. And, uh, the new things in Photoshop didn't really interest me, although it looks like to use some of these nice new brushes in Photoshop, I should uh, upgrade my Photoshop. And so I am considering that. There are some cartoonists that do some nice color that uh, looks like watercolor. I think I'd like to try some watercolor brushes. but. I'm kind of uh, comfortable with the way I've been doing this for years, so no big rush to the watercolor. Oh, Scott, that was a new comment on scanning. Yeah, I scanned it in three parts at 600 dpi because that's what the, the little scanner does best. And... Uh, then I save my line art at a thousand DPI, and sometimes a cart as a LCW compressed TIFF, and sometimes the thousand DPI line art is good. But I find that often, if I give editors line art and a color version, that even if they're printing in black and white, they'll take the color version and they'll turn it into grayscale because they like the tone, and I like this nice uh, line art because um, it's like a, a sailboat and a motorboat. Sailboats are classic. And you gotta love them for being classic. But motorboats, people like motorboats. All that grayscale stuff. Uh, all the 
color that people like instead of the line art. That's all. Friggin' motorboat. Friggin' motorboat. So I'm correcting a few little errors that I made here and there in addition to getting out the hickeys. And I think this is looking pretty clean. I'm just about done cleaning this up. I had hesitated to do a stream of the work that uh, I do it cleaning these up and coloring them because I think it's kind of boring and the the interesting stuff is the stuff that I'm figuring out as I'm drawing rather than um, rather than this uh, looking for little errors and cleaning them up like I'm doing now but you'll see that these little things pop up when you crank up the contrast. See that's his pants there. That is the rope. Pants and rope. Okay. Three on preference for line art. Well you're a your cartoon connoisseur, Scott. I notice we have some viewers on Twitch and they are not commenting and the comments on Twitch don't seem to be working right now. Getting a comment error. If you were looking at this on Twitch and you would like to uh, comment, you're welcome to join my uh, YouTube feed. Just go to uh, YouTube and search Daryl Cagle or go to my Facebook page, Facebook Facebook slash politicalcartoons.com and I posted a link to the YouTube page. All right, I'm getting pretty close here. I think this is looking pretty clean and nice. I think it looks like it was drawn with a pen, which is part of my goal here. I want it to look like it's drawn with a pen without the hassle of actually having to draw it with a pen. So all these little things that perhaps if I'd have been more careful while I was drawing it in the first place, I could have avoided. <coughs> Easier just to draw it quickly and make these changes in Photoshop. And I can futz for a long time with this uh, cleanup and revising process, finding these little errors and improvements. You're using a Cintiq? I am. You can see the Cintiq here as I'm drawing on it in a different view. Finding a little more little bits of crud to take out. You can see why I wasn't planning on doing this, but people request and they say, well, why don't you show me the other stuff that you do to color it? So that's what I'm doing. And I think everybody needs to clean up their drawings like this. Some cartoonists don't, and they send us dirty cartoons that have lots of these little hickey spots throughout and sometimes that's annoying it's like not doing your appropriate house cleaning that bubble can be clear scott says i see a preference for the lasso tool versus the eraser tool Eraser is okay, but you see it's kind of small and oops, kind of small, not as not quite as efficient as I think as the, the lasso tool is. So let's go back to the better monitor view. All right, I think I'm just about just about done here. So this is what the drawing 
ends up looking like in line art. And I think it's going to need... Um, I think it's going to need grayscale. I don't think the line art is quite carrying it today. So I'm going to make two versions of this. This will be uh, grayscale and... Um, and color. And it's kind of a large cartoon. So I'm going to have to deal with file size issues, and I'll talk about that as well. All right, so here I've got a nice 1,000 DPI line art image. And it's a bitmap image. The pixels are nothing but entirely black and entirely white. And I need to prep it to be CMYK. So I'm going to save as. And let's call this uh, CMYK 400 DPI. Good there. W. All right, so here's my next copy. Scott writes, I always wanted one but could only afford a regular tablet. Now I have an iPad Pro and looking forward to using that for cartooning. Yeah, um, I like the I, I like the Wacom tablets still better than the iPad Pro. I haven't quite seen something on the iPad that I can used to do all the stuff that I know I need to do in Photoshop with each of these cartoons. So I'm not quite there for the iPad Pro. If, if they would let me do Photoshop, full Photoshop on an iPad Pro, I would do it. They've got this uh, AstroPad, which is pretty nice, but it's, it's a little laggy. And uh, um, my daughter bought that cute little Wacom tablet that costs the same as the iPad Pro and works like a like a Wacom tablet, and so I think I may get one of those. But here I'm using my 22-inch uh, Wacom tablet. <coughs> All right, let's change this to uh, grayscale, and then to CMYK. And I'm going to pick, well, first let's uh, unlock over here and add a bunch of layers. So I'm doing the key command to add layers, but of course you can uh, add layers a little more slowly from uh, over here and just select uh, new layer. But um, I get used to doing key commands. Now I'm going to move this layer to the top and I'm going to first select the black. You notice when I select the black, it is this garbage of 75% cyan, which is blue, 68% magenta, which is pinky red, 67% yellow, and 90% black. And that's terrible. I'm going to change that to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 100. That's what you want your black lines to be, 100%. So let's select all and get the color range of black that should pick all the black lines for us then i'm going to fill with 100 percent foreground color and that should make all of these black lines oops it didn't let's try that again Zero tab, zero tab, zero tab, 100. Fill, make sure that's 100%, foreground color, OK. And did that one work? No, do it again. Zero tab, zero tab, zero tab, 100. Sometimes I don't know why it's uh, finicky like this. Fill. OK. Now let's see if that worked. Back to the eyedropper tool. Check. Is that 100? 111 and 100. Boy, it wants to not quite go there every time, doesn't it? Um, let's fill it again. OK. Now let's see how it's looking. 
back to the eyedropper tool. Boy, I don't know why I'm getting that. Oh, it's because it changed it when I did the eyedropper tool. Sorry. I've got everything in a little bit different position than I usually do, and I'm not quite my usual quick, facile self. There we go. Now that's uh, now let's uh, select the inverse, and I will delete it. So now we've got. Uh, why is that looking so light? Does this not have 100% capacity? Opacity. Inverse fill 100%. Should be right. Yeah, it's looking okay. I'm going to go back down here to the bottom layer and fill that with all white. Oh, there, that worked. I think maybe things are running a little bit slowly because I'm broadcasting and that's taking uh, taking a bit of the computer's brain to a different area than what I expect it to be working on. Nice to have 10 of you watching on YouTube. And uh, please leave me a comment. I'm happy to chat. All right, we're back here. Um, I use an old version of Photoshop, Photoshop CS4. I haven't bought Photoshop for years, but CS4 works fine for me. And uh, I may upgrade to the new Photoshop because I would like to use some uh, new brushes. But this is the way I've been doing things for years, so uh, you get to see how I've been doing things for years. Okay, you approach uh, coloring a cartoon much like you do a painting, and uh, so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to make a watercolor that I think is, uh, let's say, 25 cyan and 5 magenta. Good looking color for water. And we'll, uh, I'll do the brushes up here rather than on the Wacom tablet so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, I haven't made the thing. Image size 400. Oops. Goodness. Image size 400. It's working on that. With this broadcasting setup, I have my uh, keyboard and mouse in different places, so I'm not quite as uh, comfortable as I usually am. All right, let's do the water. So that's looking soft. Let's do a little soft water blue here. Okay. Now on this next layer. I like to do a little bit of my uh, rubber stamp texture. Capacity 35, all right. And let's give it a little bit of a little bit of texture in places. Break up these edges. A little 
little bit of water detail. Scott writes, agree, software is not there yet. I Yes, I use AstroPad, but requires new Mac OS, so limits use on older machines. Hmm. Nice step on 100% black fills. Never have done that. On the Photoshop upgrade, you'll likely have to go with a third-party purchase to get a version compatible, comparable with earlier OS of Mac species. I don't know. I'm currently using Adobe Cloud, and the newest versions require 10.9 or greater. Well, okay, we're very good. Yeah, I like the idea of the iPad, but um, I want to do all this Photoshop stuff, and iPad's not letting me do that. Let's go back over here, add a new layer, and I'm going to go get. Uh, Clean this up at the top. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's easier to just come back and clear this out than it is to try to put the color in and match it up to the lines as I'm going along. Oh, the BBC just sent me a text that Iran has met their nuclear obligations. Well, that's good to know. I know there are some guys who color much faster than I do. And I'm kind of impressed that they can do very minimal things, and it looks just about as good as if they spent time getting the lines all just right like this. But I feel like I need to be a little more complete. Here I'm making the the white texture a little more opaque at the edges. I see some of you are there on Twitch, and I'm getting a message that uh, they're unable to connect to chat. And they were having some tech problems yesterday. So again, if you want to chat with me, you can move from Twitch to my uh, YouTube feed. Where the chat is working. I'm happy to chat. You're having trouble over there. All right. I think that's starting to look good. Let's. Now, I, I don't label my layers like they advise you to do because I just uh, am too lazy. So let's give it a little cyan to do a little of the darker details in the water. That's too dark. And a little bit of pop there. I made this texture myself from uh, sponge. And I like it. I find that when it prints in the newspaper, it looks a little bit like I did this on a textured paper, which has a kind of a charm to it. Scott asks, do I have a custom color library that I use? Well, you see this up in the corner. This is their standard one, but I've added a couple of rows to it. Um, so I guess that's custom. But very often I just go over and type it into CMYK percentages rather than using the swatches. The swatches are nice, I use them. Okay. 
Okay, you don't want the water to be too dull. It's got to have some stuff going on. This is about as much detail as I think I want in the water. Otherwise, the water uh, starts taking too much attention. So, yeah, that's looking good. All right. I'm going to pick a cow color. I should say bull, shouldn't I? And and I really am just about to slow when I do this, although I don't make a lot of the butts and around errors that I have today because I usually have the drawing table and my keyboard and my mouse in a different position. It's too dark. That up just a little bit. Yeah, that's a good bull color. Not going to worry about going into his eyeballs because I'll come back and I'll white his eyeballs out later. So again, my apologies to you Twitch folks about uh, Twitch comments not working. an error message. Sorry, we were unable to connect to chat. Reconnecting in two seconds. And that two seconds never comes. Yesterday they had a chat error that had an extra 75 people in my flow, which was very interesting, but I don't think they were looking at what I was doing. I think they were playing games. But I quite like Twitch. I enjoy the idea of the creative community on Twitch. I think it's very nice. Photoshop is very forgiving, and uh, you know, you go out of the lines, just uh, flip back to the eraser. Don't worry about anything. All right, let's go with uh, a little bit lighter muzzle color. I could come back on top of him and give him a little bit more blue watery muck, I may do that. So, oh, one very important thing that I should talk about is that um, you need to take your black layer here, that's all the black lines that I have that are on their separate layer that are 100%, and select multiply and what that does is it makes all of these colors and all these other layers that I'm putting underneath the black show up underneath the, the, the black layer so that, oops, oops, 
wrong layer. That was a multiplier. So, um, you ever notice in the newspaper that sometimes uh, you get bad registration? The CMYK or print and all odd in different spots. And you don't want that. So, if you do a line drawing like this, you can end up with uh, your lines filling in and smudging out because of the poor registration. It looks just terrible. Another thing, if you don't select this multiply option, um, you end up with uh, white underneath all of your black lines. And that's often looking terrible when the registration is bad. And you'll get this little halo effect around the black lines. That just really looks bad. So that won't happen in this drawing because the color exists underneath the black lines. But keep your eye out that for that. You'll notice those, those white halos around the lines and uh, that is just poor coloring. Now, another problem that we have is that a lot of artists insist on drawing an RGB instead of CMYK. RGB doesn't include the black channel. And um, so if you have poor registration, it gets all screwed around uh, with RGB. It just makes things fudge up and fill and, um, again, not look good. So um, that's a problem because a lot of newspapers will take my nice CMYK image that's meant to be printed and look very nice in their, their poorly registered newspaper and they will uh, they'll switch it to RGB just because they don't want to think about CMYK or their printing system is set up to default to RGB because that's what they get from the photo wire services and it's usually the photo department that deals with the art. And then they'll take a lovely drawing that's been made to, to print well for them and turn it into mush. And that happens all the time. But still, I give them the drawing properly formatted in the first place, and if they don't print it well, I lay the blame on the newspaper. Scott says, I love the old school Zipatone Bende tints in the classical editorial cartoons. Reminds me of some of your sponge stamp. Well, you know, the reason for that Ben Day, again, is poor newspaper printing, wanting to control how it's going to look. A lot of these old editorial cartoonists are just all verklempt about uh, losing their duo shade paper, the stuff that you paint uh, a chemical on to make those crosshatch lines appear at a distinctive editorial cartoon look. And um, they stopped making it. Some cartoonists I know hoarded up on it so that they could stick to it as long as they could. But it is not difficult to duplicate that duo shade look in Photoshop. 
And the duo shade paper didn't uh, have archive quality. It would deteriorate over time, so these originals would be crummy. Now my pencil originals that I draw on this uh, plastic vellum paper <coughs> called Duraline, that is archive quality. It lasts forever. It doesn't deteriorate. And I like the look of the pencil on it. So I think about those things. Every so often I hit the button on my uh, my Wacom pen that makes that little pop-up window come up. Scott writes, excellent tips on the multiply in CMYK. I tend to lock layers to avoid accidental modifications. You know, I'm just so darn uh, lazy that um, I don't set attributes for layers or names for layers because I just flip those layers up generally uh, bottom to top and about as much as I worry about them. Okay. I think we can give him a little bit more uh, muzzle character. Let's do that. Muzzle character. Oops. Not the same layer as his coat. Oh, that's looking good. Well, how about a little bit of... Uh, A little bit of ochre in the horns, his eyes, be red because he's uh, he's agitated. All right, that's looking good. Give him a little bit of shoe sole color. And I Guessing the rope's going to be probably about the same color as the shoe sole. Yeah, I'm always horrified by uh, looking at cartoons where you see that white. Uh, halo effect because people um, didn't select multiply on their black layer and then they're printed in poor registration and that happens over and over and over In fact, I think I have a. I thought I had an example of it, but I don't think I do. Okay. Let's go for a little bit of uh, rope shade. Here, this would typically be, I typically keep the top layer for uh, white, so that lets me come in and 
clean up the eyeballs or the teeth. I really don't have to pay this much attention to detail in an editorial cartoon, but sometimes they're printed bigger and sometimes there's uh, somebody paying attention to this stuff. Okay, I'm going to give him a little bit more shading detail in his suit. Let's go with taking that color, making it just a little bit darker. Okay, just adding a little bit of... Uh, subtle shade to the, the gray pinstripe. Nice to have your comments here, Scott. Be nice if somebody else said something today. All right, I'm going to come back and uh, yeah, let's do this oil barrel. Oil barrel's gray. Could give it a little bit of shine. First, let's give it its gray. A couple people watching on Twitch, you guys need to say something. All right, let's give it some uh, dating. That's too much. We can go back here, less opacity on another layer in case I don't like it. A little bit of Oh, the opacity was turned way down. That's why I'm having trouble. Okay, tiny bit of three dimensionality there. Fish. Let's do some fish. Do 
these are just simple green fish. I don't want to draw a lot of attention to them because they're just an element of the background. Me some more comments and I will have more things to say for you. Again, this is why I hadn't really done coloring on a video before because uh, I don't think there's a whole lot of very creative decisions that are made in coloring. Okay, let's give the ground a little bit of texture. I want it to have a little bit of texture, but I don't want to draw a lot of attention to the ground. So I'm going to make it a little bit subtle. With my uh, rubber stamp brown. And we can give it a... green here. For the plants. That's probably just about as much color and attention as the floor of the ocean demands. Scott writes, have you thought about animating some of your work? Thought about it. I think lots of cartoonists would like to animate their cartoons, but the problem is that it's hard to find uh, a client that wants to pay for that. I've, I've thought about it, but uh, and I've done my best to try to pitch some other cartoonists who wanted to do animated cartoons and did some lovely work, but I just couldn't find clients who would pay for it. Is that right for a lobster? Not quite, I think. Maybe he needs to be a little more yellow. Got a shot. Make him a little bit lighter. That's good because I don't want to give too much attention to him. But I want him to be red lobster color because that's right for a lobster. I think that's okay. Now I'll go back up to the top and uh, color in some bubbles. Oops. All right. Let's make the bubbles white. BBC News. Economic sanctions on Iran are lifted. Not sure if that's good news. I'm sure the Republicans don't like hearing that. And I'm not sure I have a cartoon for that. Important enough to make my uh, Apple Watch go buzzing. Hey, thanks again to all of you for watching, and uh, if you would, please subscribe to my, uh, 
my page. I appreciate that. been coloring this for nearly an hour. Some cartoonists like to brag about how quickly they color. I don't think I do anything very quickly. Scott writes, even more oil going on to the world market. Yep, oil dragging down the stock market, but this low uh, oil price I think has a potential to do some good in the world. All those countries that make their money from oil, a lot of those guys are pretty bad actors. Nice to see their income shot to hell. Yeah, if you take anything from this coloring video, what you should take is change your black line to 100% K and don't let it go to that default that uh, Photoshop does, which is a little bit of uh, C, M, Y, and K. And then use that multiply option. Keep your black lines clean. And again, if you wonder wonder where I am and what I'm doing here, it's this. I'm just uh, drawing on the Wacom tablet, filling in little bubbles with white. Now let's take a look. I think he's looking pretty good. Color on here is pretty simple. I could probably add a little bit of uh, more the darker blue. I might add a little bit more of this darker blue as uh, let's have another layer. That'll be a darker blue layer. I might put that on top of the fishes. Oh, I am getting comments on, on Twitch. I'm sorry. Um, Stasia2001 writes, How often do you use the mask feature in Photoshop? You know, um, I don't use the mask feature. I just uh, freehand stuff. So uh, I really haven't played much with it. Stasia also writes, you're obviously not seeing these comments on Twitch. I would like to know what main format one can make comments to you more directly. Well, it looks like Twitch got it working, Stasia, so you're good. Uh, send me some more comments. Um, I think Twitch has been having a little trouble with their comments. Um, like I said yesterday, I was getting all those people from other streams. bit of blue to some of these uh, water drops up in the air. So anyway, my, my apologies for uh, missing you there, Stasia. Ah, there you are. I freehand stuff too. Good, good. Okay. I'm thinking that I might want to put some of this blue on top of everything. So let's do that. And we'll make that a little bigger. Capacity a little more. And let's get a little bit of blue on top of this. 
give him a little bit of sense of he's in the water. A little bit of, uh, hmm, no, I don't think I like that. Let's take that out. I'm going to keep this on top of just his suit. Give him a little bit of blue detail in the suit. Blue sponge making him look like he's under the water. I think I'm going to keep it out of his face. That might be distracting. Stasia writes, I've been wanting to break into political cartooning area. Did one or two back in the day and got paid decently well, but never followed through because I was ignorant of the process. Well, this is a particularly difficult field to break into, and I regret that. Bring this up a little bit. Um... Newspapers used to hire editorial cartoonists, and I think those days are gone. And it's good to have a home as an editorial cartoonist. It's harder to find a home these days. Does the oil can need a little blue on top of it? Scott writes, how is the Cintiq on palm rejection? Well, I got the Cintiq that doesn't do the palm noticing. It only sees the pen because I didn't want to deal with all of that. Um, although when I play with that new iPad Pro, it's very impressive how it uh, um, deals with the not noticing your palm and then you want to move the thing around and it works. It's just... Uh, Pretty amazing, but um, you know, I haven't developed a, a need for those skills. So it's not something I've been uh, missing. Bit of more water detail. A little more. Blue at the bottom, I think. Do I want to have some blue on the oil can? Well, let us decide. Does that look better? You yeah, know, I think it does. Makes it look like the oil barrel is underwater, huh? All right, I'll stick with that. So that one can go. Stasia writes, I did a political cartoon for a, a political campaign that was supposed to appear in newspapers throughout a particular state, and I invoiced accordingly based upon my research. So the one cartoon I did invoiced for over $7,000. Wow, that's very impressive. I don't know what the pay structure is. Is it based upon how many papers, venues your work gets published at, or is it just a fat, flat fee? Well, I can tell you, we, we run a syndicate where we distribute the work of about... 60 cartoonists to about 850 newspapers and one of the rules we have is that we will not sell cartoons to political campaigns and if a cartoonist draws for a campaign or a lobbyist as sometimes comes up then we fire them because uh, we want to have some journalistic integrity and, um, you know, a campaign can hire an illustrator rather than an editorial cartoonist. Editorial cartoonists are like columnists. We, um, we're expressing our opinions. And you don't want your opinion to be what someone else paid you to say. So, um... No, it doesn't pay so well. It's, we, we don't get paid from rich campaigns or lobbyists. We get paid only by poor, struggling newspapers. I think this is done. It's looking okay. Good enough. Um, yep, I'm done. Okay, so here I have all of these uh, layers. I'm just uh, saving it here. Um... 
Stasi writes, I did this cartoon over a decade ago. I would not want to repeat that again, as I agree with your policy about avoiding the work directly on a campaign. We have that problem sometimes because we have this pay-per-use site called politicalcartoons.com where anybody can just come and buy a cartoon. And sometimes the people who come and buy a cartoon are unsavory people who we don't want running our cartoons so we reserve the right to withdraw it doesn't happen very often but once in a while a political campaign will buy a cartoon and then they'll be really annoyed when we call up and say oh, i'm sorry no stasi writes so you act as an agency for cartoonists in your syndicate yes we are an agency and that's basically how i can work without a newspaper because uh, i've got this little agency which is how i make a living which i do for the purpose of uh, allowing me to always keep drawing my cartoons for the biggest audience without having to have a, an editor or a newspaper which um i used to have and uh i'd kind of like to have but i think that it's not a business plan because um you know the the newspapers are not tiring editorial cartoonists anymore. We're on the chopping block. Okay, this is done. I have saved it. Um, I need to do a black and white version. I'm going to take a look at this and see how it looks in black and white, but right now, for now, I'm going to save as, and I will save this as uh, oil and bull CMYK, let's call it final. And for the final one, I will uh, merge all of these layers. And save. And it may be that the file turns out to be too big. We have a file size limit of three and a half megabytes for each cartoon because probably 150 of the cartoons are emailed to editors. And sometimes if you have too big an attachment, they just reject the email and you're screwed. So we have that three and a half meg file size limit. So very often I find that I will have to save as a JPEG in order to get the size down. So let's do that. Let's save it as a JPEG. And let's say quality 8. I can guess that that's going to be just as big as I need to get it to be under 3.5 megs. So I saved it as a JPEG. Okay. Stasia writes, how does one, me, I'm talking about me, submit work to you and go about getting work as an editorial political cartoonist? Well, I tell you, the way that uh, editorial cartoons are structured is that um, syndication just pays a pittance. It's terrible. Um, and that's because the price of uh, editorial cartoons has been driven down by uh, competition. And that's what my competitors charge and uh, we're stuck with it. So a typical newspaper probably pays on the order of about $20 a week for the whole service of everything we've got. 60 cartoonists and 14 columnists and that's because that's what they pay from other services. Um, uh oh, I'm sorry Stasia, but uh, Twitch is giving me their error message that they're unable to connect to chat. So um, um, try again, but I'm not uh, sure we're connecting right now or you can come uh, find me on uh, YouTube where the chat seems to be working just fine all right let's close this window and let's open up a new one which was my uh, earlier one that had uh, all the layers and let's take a look at this and see how we think it uh, oh Stasia, you're back. Maybe it wasn't broken. Maybe it just says it's broken, but nobody's leaving a comment when it's broken, so you can't know for sure. You're right. So you send them a 3.5 megabyte JPEG to editors basically as a thumbnail to entice them to order the full-size image. Nope. 3.5 megabyte is the full-size image. We do have thumbnails, but the thumbnails are tiny. 
Um, so the full size image will be a 400 DPI 8 inch wide JPEG um, in my case and uh, that's plenty big because uh, they really only need 175 uh, DPI to print in a newspaper so they could print it uh, uh, three times as big from the 400 DPI file. Stasia writes $20 per week. How the heck do you or anyone else make money? I'm confused. Well, we make money because we've got 850 newspapers paying that, and we've got uh, the pay-per-use site where we sell uh, pay-per-use. But what that, I think, is instructive of is that uh, it's terrible to, for a cartoonist to try to go into a local newspaper and say, hey, will you pay me 50 bucks for a cartoon? And they say, ha, huh, we, we pay less than that for 200 cartoons a week. And uh, what the hell are you going to do? It's terrible. Um, my answer to that was to start my own syndicate. Uh, but I don't have a solution to the price problem because I'm, I'm uh, competing in the marketplace. All right. Now let's uh, see how this looks in black and white. Don't merge. And let's just show me what it looks like. Uh, it's not looking bad. Do I need to make any changes to that? Sometimes just picking grayscale makes it look okay. Usually I need to go in and futz with something to get it to look better. Um, so anyway, uh, Stasia, the way to be an editorial cartoonist is to um, find a client that will pay you something more and then you do a little bit of syndication on the side and it's the syndication that gets your cartoon seen and that is a part of the public debate and that has an impact on the world where you want to spread your ideas around and it's the uh, one client that allows you to um, make them happy and do what they want and uh, put you, their name into your cartoon under your signature so that it it uh, gets their name around and um, I think I'm just going to go with this as the black and white version. I think it's looking okay. So let's flatten and let's call this gray. Tiff, I don't need to save a JPEG for that because the uh, grayscale file, grayscale file is going to be uh, much smaller. Um, so most of the cartoonists in our group have um, have a newspaper or a client that uh, is their main client, and they'll put the name of that client under their signature in their cartoon. You'll notice that if you look at editorial cartoons, you'll see the the publication under the signature. Um, and it's, I don't think it's just practical to uh, draw only for syndication. Syndication is just something you do on the side when you're already uh, already doing cartoons for someone else. And you could have three or four clients. You know, maybe you do one a week for somebody or one a month. Toss those clients into the, the same jumble and then do your second rights with the syndicate or other online stores. There are other online stores than ours. You know, there's... Uh, Cartoonist Group and Cartoon Stock and uh, Artisans. I mean, there's lots of competition in the, the paper use as well. So, Stasi, I suggest you go to politicalcartoons.com, which you see in the lower right-hand corner of my uh, screen here. And if you click on any of those cartoon thumbnails, you will see uh, a price list of uh, what it costs to license the cartoon for different things. Keep in mind that's a second use price list, non-exclusive second use. Um, and I think the prices are about what you would expect them to be. Um, okay, hey, I'm done with this cartoon. You've seen the color, you've seen the black and white. Now I'm gonna upload these to our, uh, our site and um, email them out to the newspapers where hopefully on Monday oil prices dropping and the stock market dropping will still be a major story.
and I'm kind of guessing that it will. Editors aren't going to look at this until Monday because they're off for the weekend and they put their um, their weekend newspapers uh, to bed on Friday and put the cartoons in the Sunday paper on Friday so this won't get considered till Monday. I could actually wait a day or two before I post it. But uh, hey, it's done and here it is and I don't know if I'm going to show the Photoshop aspect of this um, if it's too boring, but if people want to see it, then I will do it. Um, hey, thank you for the kind words, Stasia. Thank you for your comments, Scott. And thank all of you uh, silent people that show up in the counter but don't say anything. And you have seen this cartoon from start to finish. Thank you, everyone. So, um... I'm going to uh, I'm going to bid you all goodbye, and until I do the next drawing. So please subscribe and please uh, keep your eye out for my next stream. If you uh, take a look at uh, uh, my Facebook or twi Twitter feeds, you can see when I announce a little bit before I do a drawing. Um, but the drawings are all archived on YouTube, so you can come back and look. So hey. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for the kind words again, Stasia. It's nice that I'm not boring, at least for you. Okay.